again and I'm back again. This is Delia and I am back again to read The Vampire Diaries, The Awakening and The Struggle. But we're on, still on Awakening and this is Chapter 5. All right, chapter 5. Alright, the full moon was directly overhead when Stefan came home to the boarding house. He was giddy, almost reeling, both from fatigue and from the glut of blood he'd taken. He had been a long time, it had been a long time since he'd let himself feed so heavily. But the burst of wild power by the graveyard had caught him up in its frenzy shattering his already weakened control. He still wasn't sure where the power had come from. He had been watching the human girls from his place in the shadows when it had exploded from behind him, sending the girls fleeing. He had been caught between the fear that they would run into the river and desire to probe this power and find its source. In the end, he had followed her, unable to chance her getting hurt. Something black had winged toward the woods. As the humans reached the sanctuary of the bridge, but even Stefan's night senses could not make out what it was. He had watched while she and the other two started in the direction of town. Then he had turned back to the graveyard. It was empty now, purged of whatever had been there. On the ground lay a thin strip of silk that to ordinary eyes would have been gray in the dark. But he saw its true color and he crushed it between his fingers, bringing it slowly up to the touch of his lips. He could smell the scent of her hair. Memory engulfed him. It was bad enough when she was out of sight when the cool glow of her mind only teased at the edges of his consciousness. But to be in the same room with her at the school, to feel her presence behind him, to smell the heady fragrance of her skin all around him, was almost more than he could bear. He had heard every soft breath she took, felt her warmth radiating against his back, sensed each throb of her sweet pulse, and eventually, to his horror, he had found himself giving in to it. His tongue had brushed back and forth over his canine teeth, enjoying the pleasure, pain that was building there, encouraging it. He'd breathe her smell into his nostrils deliberately and let the visions come to him, imagining it all. How soft her neck would be and how his lips would meet it with equal softness. At first, planting tiny kisses here and there until he reached the yielding hollow of her throat. How he would nuzzle there in the place where her heart beat so strongly against the delicate skin. And how at last his lips would part. Would draw back from aching teeth now sharp as little daggers. And no, he brought himself out of the trance with a jerk his own pulse beating raggedly, his body shaking. The class had been dismissed. Movement was all around him, and he could only hope no one had been observing him too closely. When she had spoken to him, he had been unable to believe that he had to face her while his veins burned and his whole upper jaw ached. He'd been afraid for a moment that his control would break that he would seize her shoulders and take her in front of all of them. He had no idea how he'd gotten away, only that some time later he was channeling his energy into hard exercise. Dimly aware that he must not use the powers, it didn't matter. Even without him, he was in every way superior to the mortal boys who competed with him on the football field. His sight was sharper, his reflexes faster his muscles stronger. Presently, a hand had clasped 
had clapped him on the back, and Matt's voice had rung in his ears. Congratulations. Welcome to the team. Looking into the honest, smiling face. Stefan had been overcome with shame. If you knew what I was, you wouldn't smile at me, he thought grimly. I've won this competition of yours by deception and the girl you love. You do love her, don't you? Is in my thoughts right now. And she had remained in his thoughts despite all his efforts to banish her that afternoon. He had wandered to the graveyard blindly, pulled from the woods by a force he did not understand. Once there, he had watched her, fighting himself, fighting the need until the surge of power had sent her and her friends running, and then he'd come home. But only after feeding, after losing control of himself. He couldn't remember exactly how it happened, or how it happened, but he let it happen. Oh, how he'd let it happen. The flare of power had started it, wakening things inside him, best left sleeping. The human, the, the hunting need, the craving for the chase, for the, spell, for the smell of fear and the savage trumpet of the kill. It had been years, centuries, since he felt the need with such force. His veins had begun burning like fire, and all his thoughts had turned red. He could think of nothing else but the hot, coppery taste, the primal vibrancy of blood. With that excitement still raging through him, he'd taken a step or two after the girls. What might have happened if he hadn't scented the old man was better not thought about. But as he reached the end of the bridge, his nostrils have flared at the sharp, distinctive odor of human flesh. Okay, this is part one of chapter five. I will continue.